Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. In this episode, I'm gonna be making this rather cheap circle cutting jig from Offcut Supply, which could actually cut circles a lot, lot bigger than this one. The first job is to cut the rail to fit in the mitre slot. Uh, I had to cut this twice, I've cut the first one too thinly. Once you've got it fitting there nice and snug, just sand it down so that the thickness doesn't actually bottom out. Then glue it onto the plywood that I'm going to use as the base. Tried clamping this with just ordinary clamps and a bit of wood over the top and it was a bit of a fail. I think just basically because the wood was just so thin. For all the top I've got some off cuts here of some 12mm ply which I think I had from when I built the actual shed. So just using a handsaw here cutting them all to the same length. They're not all fully square because they were all rough cut. Just choosing an appropriate router bit from my new router set I bought. This is then mounted into my homemade table that I made. It really, really does make life a lot, a lot easier for this type of work. Just slowly going down to the depth. Uh, this, first of all, I'm going to cut out the groove for where the head of the bolt is going to be recessed. Then I just move on to a smaller bit and don't do what I do, did here. Don't go backwards on the bit. It should really turn over and go to the other end as the wood will pull. Once there's glue it all dried or whatever, it's just clearing off all that odd bit of glue with a chisel so it will slide nicely on the saw. Then I'm just cutting a stopper block on the end for how far I want the board to slide onto the saw. Trimming up uh, the actual main slide piece. Uh, as I said, these pieces are not square, so they all at least have one straight edge on them. What I also found as well was that one of the boards is starting to separate on one of the ends, so I had to trim that back to a short length. Just using ordinary wood PVA glue just to fix these on, clamp them down. With the heat we've got at the moment, it really, really does dry fairly quickly. So Put the sliding piece in the middle there and I've got a couple of very small spaces in there so that when I clamped the other side on it was actually in place. Just to give an extra bit of support just put an extra piece of ply on the end so it's the other side of the saw so that at least when the work cuts through the saw it is fully supported. While the board is all drying up I decided to find some nails which I was going to use for pins. What I found was three different size nails, so I grounded off the really the sharp point on the grinder first, then just using the rotary tool, just cut them all to length, and then back to the grinder again just to tidy them up a little bit. I did actually make quite a few of these uh, of each different size, because then at least that way, depending on what work you want to mount on the actual jig, you've always got hopefully an appropriate size pin to use, whether it be thickness or length. This really was a quick process. Every time I was going back to the grinder, the wheels were still spinning while it was slowing down. Uh, and I was starting up the grinder every time. So it was literally back and forth all the time. Back to the actual main board work, glue had dried, and it was just a case again, wood PVA glue again, just to put the actual stopper block on. With all the, the actual pins made, I decided what I'd do for each one is just drill a hole into a piece of waste wood first to test fit the piece and I wanted a, a nice tight snug fit where I could so it was a case of drilling a slightly smaller hole and then hammering in with a hammer and then pulling out with a pair of pliers. I'm actually drilling on the wrong side so off camera I then had to re-drill them all on the opposite side. Thank you. 
One of the final parts, just drilling the actual hole in there, then putting it all together. I also needed to put a small spacer in, and which I just CA glued in, just so that that sliding section wouldn't actually reach the actual saw blade. A little bit of lathe work, decided to go for a bit of oak to make a nice handle to tighten up the nut. Just quickly rounded it off with a scoo chisel, a bit of gauge work, drilled out a couple of holes and one was I think was at 13 mil, which is actually about the, the narrowest width on the bolt. And then a slightly smaller hole, which I think I did about an eight mil, which is probably a little bit too tight for the actual bolt itself to travel to pass through. I decided to use the rotary tool to see if I could make some form of an extra area on the actual piece to grip with. But with this being oak, it just really wasn't having much impact on there whatsoever. I mean, I was going to take absolutely ages on this. So in the end, I decided to just part it off and cut out all these grooves. I and mean, I only just did four sort of notches on the saw. Then went back to the rotary tool with the sanding bit and just smoothed everything up. And this really did work well. It's nice and easy to grip. Inserting the actual nut was just a case of putting the nut on the bolt because it's a coach bolt and having it on a nice hard surface and just gently hammering it in. Now everything is made, it's just a case of giving the whole thing a, a gentle sand over just to make it all as smooth as possible. I then just used some Wood Wax 22, just rub it all on over all the top of the surface and then just leave it briefly and then give it all a, a buff up by hand. And as you can see there, this is a 280mm disc which I've been reusing in a future project. Very, very quick and easy to cut. First things, results. I've got to say, an almost perfect circle. A very, very minor flat spot on there. You do get a bit of tear out and as you can see I've just literally just gentle sanded back one edge and you do get a really nice edge on there so for cutting a circle on the bandsaw this does work an absolute treat. The whole thing literally made from off cuts of plywood from what I've got laying around. The top all 12 mil ply I had a length which was literally about the width of these pieces lying in another shed which was just ideal just to cut up for this. You'll also notice that I've actually drilled three holes on here and the reason for that was that I had initially thought about putting a bolt in there to hold your piece but then I thought you've got to hold that from underneath somehow and that means gluing in something that's fixed permanently. I started looking at my nails and I just started cutting off different sizes so at least depending on your work you're putting on there you could actually use just different size holes. The other thing I also did up which out of video was created some longer ones so if you've got a big bowl blank or something you could actually it would just hold a little little better as this stands at the moment it will cut if i can undo it discs in there up to about a radius of 800 mil which is 16 inches so it's a diameter of 32 inches or 800 mil, which to me is a massive disc. I mean, that's like that, a big, big disc. However, potentially you could, if you'd put these, drilled yourself another pinhole at this end when it's extended, you could potentially then get up to almost double that size. You're looking at around about 31 inches radius, which is, near enough 800 mil radius so that's 1600 mil diameter uh you could get on a circle on this uh might be quite fun trying to keep it balanced and cutting but that is the potential of this i've just given it a, a light coat of wood wax 22 on the end there obviously any wax will do it just helps you work smooth slide over smoothly and i only gave it to the surface not to underneath because Obviously, the less that this moves, the better. Quite a crude nut on the bottom. Just literally just made that out of oak. Hammered in the what the, the actual nut rather than epoxied it in. Uh, I think really that the ply will probably break away before the nut starts slipping. Yes, I could cut this back, uh, but I'm quite happy with it at the minute. Uh, it's not causing me any issues. 
This here is just basically the stopper so that when you slide your piece onto the board with your work, that it just stops into one place. And there's your rail for your mitre. Again, it's more important that it slides in there than worrying about the wobble, because I think once you've got your work in there, um, you're cutting with a bandsaw blade, so it's not the finest cutting thing going. Now, I wanted to go for something which was totally adjustable rather than having fixed holes in there. I mean, the fixed holes will be fine. If you're just doing bowl blanks and stuff like that, uh, fixed holes will be fine. But when I'm doing my clocks and needing to cut out a piece of plywood that fits exact in there, which I've always been doing on the lathe, uh, just mounting them on this block, they worked fine, but you do get a little bit of tear out. It's not a quick job. And at least this way, because I've always got to drill a hole in the center of the, for where the clock movement goes into, this should be absolutely ideal. Now I've done this so that you do actually slide in with your work. And the reason for that is because you always start off with a square piece or something like that. So once you've got it mounted on your pins in here, you can't just cut, start cutting a circle on the edge very well. It's better to cut with inside. So at least that way you can slide in to get your initial cut first of all for where you're round all the way in. And at that point, I mean, when you're something like there, I mean, you could clamp this, but I've not found it any issue because you're constantly putting pressure on this end with your work to turn it around and it works very well. Now I'm sure there's a lot better ones out there on YouTube, which look a lot, lot better than this. I mean, yes, I could go out and buy some wood and stuff like that, but really I don't see the point. Just use what you've got available. And this does everything that I wanted it to do, if not more. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next project video.